top of the year. You know, Johnny Depp taught me this on Pirates. He used to say, the fans are the boss. And that's really the truth. I mean, so thank you very much for helping me feed my family and keep a roof over my head. Yeah. Thanks for entertaining us over the years. Of course, my brother. That's what I do. You know what? The, they pay you in the acting business for the waiting around. If you're a true professional, the acting you're always willing to do for free. And that's the key of it, you know? I always encourage someone when they're trying to figure a path out in life. It's like, do something you love and you'll never work a day in your life. So if you're young and you're passionate about something, don't be afraid to go for it in life. Because ultimately, that's what I've done. You know, it's being an actor is probably the most shallow thing you can do with your life, right? It's very <laughs> egocentric. It's all about me. Hey, listen, I'm honest. I do it for the attention and I like the money. The art is what you guys bestow upon me. That's what you see. You know, you know that it doesn't matter what the actors are thinking when they're playing a scene. I mean, once upon a time, I have a beautiful girlfriend, Amy Acker, on the show. And she's a knockout, and yeah, I'm in fake love with her big time, right? Um, but when we're doing a love scene, half the time it's like all oh, my kids texting me or whatever, and we have to play a scene, oh God, I love you like I've never loved anyone, and really we're both starving and the taco lady's outside. You know? And I'm thinking, boy, that burrito is gonna be so good, and she's thinking, man, I need two tacos right now. But in your mind, it's like these guys really love each other. And so that's actually one of my favorite things about acting is that it doesn't matter what the actors are thinking, it's what the audience thinks the actors are thinking that matters. So your perception, Van Gogh never sold a painting, right? He never knew he was a genius, right? Our art form demands someone watching us. We're not actually acting if someone's not watching. I might as well, I'd be a crazy guy. If I'm doing my lines and no one's watching me, I'm a crazy dude or I'm on a Bluetooth. <laughs> right? How many times have you walked down the street and some dude's on a Bluetooth and you're like, and you start talking back to him? <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're on the phone, dude, whatever. That's the actor. That actor who's always, and the other thing is too, Anthony Hopkins says, to always say your lines aloud. So that you, because a lot of actors will read, if you're a young actor and you're working on a, on a part, read it aloud so that your mind's ear hears you doing it so that on the day you don't freak yourself out. Like if you, if I were to stop right now and listen to my voice, uh, that I get caught up in, right? Acting is about, is about reaction. It's not about thought, right? You don't, you don't want to be too smart to be an actor. Don't ever get caught thinking up there. Don't ever get caught doing it. That's one thing about acting. You don't want to get caught doing it, right? That's why I always take a great compliment in the fact that I might be from, when I did Pirates, people didn't know when Grumpy came out that it was the same dude. And I'd be on my Twitter page and I'd always retweet, like, Grumpy's Pintel! <laughs> That's a big compliment to me. That says, hey, I'm doing my job. You don't, you don't remember that, you don't know that I'm a surfer dude from Southern California. You think of me as, hello, puppy. <laughs> Rod? Rod? And, and that accent, Rod? Oh, that sounds pretty good, right? Well, that accent is worked on for days and weeks and months and months, you know? For example, when you get an accent, you don't try and remember and think like you're in jolly old England and do the accent. It's like a very scientific um, breakdown of the script. So if my line is, he's right, that's what the line is, H-E apostrophe S-R-I-G-H-T, in the script, my character would say it like, he's right, right? So then I would cross out the he's right, and I would write E-E-S, he's, <laughs> R-O-I-T, right. So in my mind, that's what I memorize, he's right. I don't even say he's right, I could screw it up. But he's right, it's always gonna be somewhere, the mistake will be at least on that side of the ocean, right? So. <laughs> A lot of the stuff we do is tricks, tricks. We're trying to get you guys to get the perception that we're thinking something. That's why method acting, you'll have all kinds of actors that come in here. It's a whatever works business, right? So you might find uh, Daniel Day-Lewis that really needs to get into it as Sean Penn. I grew up with a lot with Sean Penn, for example. And Sean, great story, invited us to lunch one time on, he was doing that movie, I Am Sam. 
He invites me and a couple buddies to lunch and he doesn't break character. He's the whole time at lunch, he's like having lunch with Sam, the character or whatever, the thing. So then like, I don't know, three months later, we're like going out to a party and we're like, yeah, make sure Sean knows, give him a call. Hey Sean, you can come, but don't bring the retard, you know what I mean? And he was like, I was looking for me to punch me and I'm like, hey buddy, it was a joke, buddy, it was a joke, buddy. Sean's pretty intense, but, um, you know, I'm real lucky to do what I do and I, and I really think that 99.9% .9 of it is due to, to you guys. A lot of actors don't. I just happen to be a you know a bit of an extrovert in this business. Usually, the best actors are the introverts, the ones you know in the high school theater. The guys in the front of the room going boo boo boo. They're the ones that rarely make it. It's usually the guy that's kind of dark and fake and tense in the back that turns out to be Johnny Depp or whatever. <laughs> and you know, interesting story about Johnny. I got a buddy in L.A. who was a famous music video director, right? And when Johnny first came to town, Johnny wanted to be a rock star. Johnny did not want to be an actor. He came to L.A. to be a rock and roll star. And uh, he would audition for my buddy's music video, and my buddy goes, oh, you're too good looking for my, my movie. You know? And then, so now, they'll see each other. And for the last 30 years, anytime Johnny sees my buddy Frank, he goes, Frank, huh? I think you should have cast me. <laughs> and it's true, you know, like we all make choices in the business and hopefully you just make the right choices along the, along the way. It's a lot about, you know, having the courage to go for it and then not taking no for an answer. My dad was in the military, right? Would always tell me, you know, dude, you gotta have something to fall back on. You gotta have something to fall back on. And I go, Semper Fi, Mac, don't you guys always go forward? Aren't you falling forward in the core? Isn't that the whole deal? You're not allowed to die on your back, you're a Marine, you're going, they're going to roll you over, right? So when I used his own logic on him, he goes, oh, okay, son, I believe in you. Yeah. So, I am a sardonic dude, I am likely, in fact, this season very much, they've hung out with me for a year, so they, all the kind of comedy, those lines that come out of Grumpy, they're Lee lines. It's exactly how I am. You guys will all be talk, 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 and then I got the one line that busts you all up and cuts to the quick. That's just who I am as a dude. Um, but prior to Pirates, I used to have this horrible experience where people would come up to me and they go, we know you, we know you. And um, I would say to myself, well, they, but where from? And then I would have to list the whole IMDB page. <laughs> and they still wouldn't know. And then I felt terrible. I was like, I, and that's, that's one thing you gotta understand at this show like this is that, you know, it's tough when there's no people, when you got, when Mike Brooker's got 50 people and you don't got a lot. You know, I mean, it's emotionally, it's tough. So, it's not an easy game. Like me, I don't care, because you're kind of missing out on the best table if you're not at my table. But, at the same, by the same token, by the same token, um, you know, you, you, you play the game, you take your chances, right? So, you gotta hope for the best. But once I had done Pirates, I always knew that they knew who I was and they didn't, you know, because the, the world made us famous on Pirates. Um, and so then I would always just go, hello, puppet. <laughs> and then the look on their face was brilliant because they knew me but didn't know me. So fortunately, I think I've gotten over that last bit of a hurdle. Um, obviously, um, all of these great shows, um, any show that I'm, you know, lucky enough to say yes to, I'm proud to be a part of. Obviously, I would say the number ones that people would remember me from, Seinfeld um, was the first one that really started getting me recognized at the dog park in L.A., you know. I remember I did the Seinfeld, uh, the parking space, and I got a standing ovation at the dog park the next day. And that was hot. All my buddies at the dog park were like, yeah, right on, you know. So, it's been a, it's a wonderful ride. Obviously with Pirates, I mean, my big break was they couldn't find the short, bald, and crazy in London. You know? <laughs> because if you look at that cast list, with the exception of Johnny and my buddy Marty Kleba, everyone else is British. Or, I mean, Rush is Australian. So, there was a lucky break that Gore, who cast that movie as a stickler, and realizes that, you know, 99% of a director's job is putting the right actor in the right role. And then you don't have to really worry about the cast. You're kind of you focused in on the technical requirements of making your movie, right? So casting is key. You don't want to have to cast an actor. That's why now, if you're a, an actor getting into the business, especially in television, you know, it used to be that we would go in with our sides, the pages with our script on it, and you weren't 
supposed to not have it with you because you didn't want to let the audience think that you were giving a performance. Now the business has changed where you go in, I take no script, I don't have any backup, if I no safety net, I have to know my material uh, because they want that performance. They don't trust you to be an actor anymore in this business, they want you to be the dude. It takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to get trusted to wear the makeup, do an accent, actually get to do some acting. They're very much trying to just cast you and make it easy, especially in television. So if you're getting into the game, know that. Um, the, the window is narrowed. You must go in focused, must go in ready. You used to want to be able to tell them, you know, you do it as best you can, but always have somewhere to go. Be able to be directed to achieve it. They like to think that they can, we're uber marionettes actors, right? And directors are the ones that pull our strings. And so you want to be able to give that director, you never tell a director a good, an idea. You always have to make that director think it's their idea or they won't buy it, even if your idea is a fantastic idea, right? Unless you get enough respect by having 30 years in the business and have been in some successful franchises where maybe they do appreciate your opinion. But for the most part, it's like shut up and act, you know? And, you, and, you're, and you're okay like that. 